Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to one more Sekiwake Breakdown for Nagoya 2023. This one, our top matchup between Hoshoryu and Daisho. Hoshoryu leads the series 5 4. However, Daisho won the first two, meaning Hoshoryu will look pretty dominant in the seven fights we watch here. The fights we have for this video are also quite short, but they raise some questions that don't necessarily have easy answers. Let's get into the clips and see what we got. If you watched the Daisho and Wakamoto Haru video, or like any of Daisho's recent matches, this might look a little surprising. His hands are going outside of Hoshoryu's rather than right up the middle. It's unfortunate Jason's channel went down because he probably had their first two matches, which Daisho won by Oshidashi and Oshitayoshi. That basically means he shoved Hoshoryu out the way he usually wins fights, and I would have liked to see those for this breakdown. Anyway, they do a little sumo square dance with each guy stepping left. It's Hoshoryu though, not Daisho, that's driving forward. Daisho hits a hop stop and gets his right hand up for a pull down as Hoshoryu barrels forward. This seems unusual in light of recent Bashos, where Daisho tends to strike first and go for pull downs as necessary. But sometimes you gotta mix it up, right? Either he misjudged or misplanned something though, because Hoshoryu gets in on him faster than he can react to it. He doesn't even get his hand on the head, now he's just trying to get the hell out of the way. To his credit, he does evade Hoshoryu pretty cleanly, forcing Hoshoryu to hold on to him and make a big, twisting jump stop to maintain position. If he could have kept his footing, maybe he could have turned that into something, but maybe not. It looked like he got out of trouble, but he was fighting on the retreat, and that's not what he's best at. Daesho comes in with the double forearms. I haven't done a detailed study of his Tachi eye tendencies, but at the very least, this is not an opening designed to start a pushing attack. Hoshoryu absorbs the forearm clunk and immediately reaches around for the belt. Daesho looks extremely cognizant of Hoshoryu's desire to get that belt, and rather than attacking, gets his feet and hips back immediately to evade the grab. Hoshoryu's fine with that and presses forward. Daesho gets his forearms back up. But now his center of gravity is high, and he's not the best at standing his ground against pressure from high level guys with the pushing power to move him, so back to the rope he goes. His left hands come down though, so he's probably going to do something with it. That something is pulling on Hoshoryu's right arm while pushing on the other side, trying to send Hoshoryu the way his momentum is taking him while getting a last second evade off to the right. But Hoshoryu's strong enough that his left hand around the upper back keeps Daesho moving and sends him out first. Are you surprised by Daisho's tactics in these first two matches? Well, keep watching. Daisho still doesn't attack Hoshoryu's body. His right hand goes for the elbow, which is purely to control the arm, and his left goes outside. Remember how his immediate move off the Tachiai in the last match was to avoid a belt grab rather than attack? Well, it's impossible to control a guy's arm for long, and when Hoshoryu gets his left hand free and reaches again, Daisho once more throws it in reverse. He's even hopping back just to keep Hoshoryu's hands at bay. This is not the Daisho with three straight double-digit tournaments who's in his second straight Basha with a shot at Ozeki. Once Hoshoryu gives up on the belt and switches to pushing, he's got a straight shot out of the ring. He could probably yeet Daisho into the Gyoji for funsies, but he sticks with the basic push-out. Holy crap, Daisho finally cut it out with the yakety sax nonsense and got after the man. Hoshoryu looks completely unprepared for it. In fairness, Daisho hasn't done this against him, at least not for a while, so it's a little hard to blame him. Now comes a moment of truth. Daisho's committed to the push. Hoshoryu's bent back, sticking in place mostly by way of his general flexibility, but this can't hold. Daisho's hand is sticking to his face. Does he find the parry and get himself out of this, or does Daisho keep bombing away? He swung the arm up and around, but in fight terms, this move has taken a while, and Daisho gets his arm off the face just in time, primed for another attack while Hoshoryu recovers. God, can you imagine that bear paw threatening to swallow your face? Hoshoryu's doing a good job of keeping his weight forward and making this difficult. Daisho's up on his toes with the effort of getting this push to work. He seems to have momentum on his side, but notice how his body is centered over Hoshoryu's right leg. Uh-oh, he's really committed to using this static push. Doesn't look like he's getting away from the parry. Hoshoryu shoves the arm away. Now, on camera, in a still frame, this still looks like they're square up. But this is why I said to notice how Daisha was positioned off-center relative to Hoshoryu. 
Hoshoryu barely moves, yet Daesho's momentum launches him almost completely past the guy. From here, it's no big deal for Hoshoryu to spin him around and out. This is the weakness of Daesho's main style that we're more familiar with, but he finally used his main style, and it worked a hell of a lot better than his previous defense-focused strategies. <laughs> Daesho's Tachi I hear is a weird mix of the aggressive push and the defensive ideas he showed before. He starts with his hands to the outside, which again looks designed to control Hoshoryu's arms, at least for a moment. This time, though, Hoshoryu immediately drives forward rather than even fainting for the belt, and Aisha reacts with his accustomed push. It's impossible to know if he pushed purely as a reaction, or if he planned the delayed push and just happened to be on the back foot, but hey, he's pushing. However, Hoshoryu's not bad at that game either. Even though Daesho has the aesthetic advantage here, messing up Hoshoryu's face, he's also the one moving back. Then whack! This is where the fight turns. It's another dual push, with Daesho again on the face and Hoshoryu again under the arm, but Daesho absolutely gets the better of this one. He comes in with the left hand strike, and we can see Hoshoryu's right hand already coming up to parry. But this time Daesho doesn't let it stick at all, gets it away from the swinging arm, and dives in. Hoshoryu's right hand is low, searching for an underhand grip, but this is as much a survival position as anything. This is a double-handed push with no defense in sight. It might be the happiest day of Daesho's life. He steps in with both hands up again, and Hoshoryu's just sitting on the train tracks with the light coming down the tunnel. Boom, boom, out. I guess that's one way for Daesho to get his style to work. Surprise Hoshoryu with it while on defense and get on him before he realizes what's happening or what to do about it but it's not exactly a consistent strategy. <laughs> Daesho's hands are outside again. Daesho swivels left and goes for a pulldown again. Hoshoryu jump stops again, and there's no way the pulldown works now unless Daesho drags him to the ground by his top knot. But Hoshoryu's gotta stand up, which leaves a moment for Daesho to get in and create some offense. And he... bear hugs Hoshoryu? He doesn't even do that though. He dives into Hoshoryu's tender embrace, cupping the sides of his head instead. He accepts Hoshoryu's affectionate hug and allows himself to be escorted home. It's very romantic, but it's not a particularly effective fighting strategy. Daesho gets his arms up, but he doesn't do the full forearm block in front like before. Instead, he uses his forearms to brace against the incoming Hoshoryu's shoulders, then repositions and gives him a solid face shove. If he's not willing to go full bore into Hoshoryu with that Supari style, this type of hybrid approach might be Daesho's best option. Hoshoryu tries to stay in the pocket, but he doesn't land a parry, and Daesho gives him another immediate push to send him back again. Hoshoryu looks balanced in this position, but his momentum is going backwards. Since Daesho's hands are out, Hoshoryu tries something he hasn't gone for in any of these fights so far, a slap down on the hands with a sidestep to the left. As we can see, he got free for the moment, but Daesho has also recovered his balance quickly. Daesho barrels in, but Hoshoryu comes in to meet him, which is a good way to absorb some of that power. He immediately steps back into a pulldown position, but Daesho just stands up and no attempt at all is made. Hoshoryu actually manages a good last-ditch parry around the back of Daesho's shoulder, but he doesn't have enough space to work with. So, realistically, which way is this fight likely to go? The immediate answer is Hoshoryu with good reason. He's apparently lived rent-free in Daesho's head for a while, and only in their last few fights has Daesho tried to put the style he's comfortable with to use. He was very successful with it this past May, which lends some recency bias to the equation. However, his other win came when he cracked Hoshoryu with a good shove while defending and took advantage, and none of his losses were particularly close. The biggest question is whether Daesho notices he has one pretty significant opening here. When he's pushed well, Hoshoryu has not shown much capacity for defending against it. We could say it's because he's used his pushing style so little that Hoshoryu is usually ready for other tactics, but look at Hoshoryu's losses this Basho to Kotonowaka and Hokuto Fuji. Kotonowaka doesn't attack the same way as Daesho, but he put everything into forward pressure and Hoshoryu couldn't quite hold him off. And Hokuto Fuji won with his own style, which is like an even more relentless Daesho. There's no way Daesho and his team haven't noticed all of this. Hoshoryu is and should be the favorite, but Daesho can absolutely win if he pulls his head out of his sash and realizes his own style is exactly what he needs.
All right, that'll do it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.